Hey everyone, and welcome to the Kathy Reiselitz Show. I am Kathy Reiselitz, and today I am joined by C4SS writer and polyamorous person for a year and a half, Nick Ford. And we're going to talk about um, an article that I've recently written for the week about Facebook potentially offering a polyamorous option. Nick Ford, how are you today? Yeah, yeah, I just woke up a little bit ago, but, uh, but, uh, but other than that, I'm actually pretty good. So. Okay, good. So what did you think about the article? Um, so uh, so I think it's a I think it's a positive development that that Facebook has allowed for more gender options. That's what it did first before it did um, or it, it could possibly do these uh, these open relationship options. I think as a general thing, it's a good idea. Um, I am a little I do want to put a little bit of nuance in how positive it is because I'm concerned that. I don't know how widespread this idea actually is, but just as a general concern that people become too reliant on these social networks kind of um, kind of actualizing who they are or kind of like legitimizing their lifestyles or like see like like see like polyamory's on Facebook and so you know therefore it's like a legit thing. Um, and I don't know how widespread that that feeling is or people are just like, well, it's just cool to have it on Facebook just because you know it helps people know where I'm at. you know if that's all it is, that's cool. Um, I'm just, you know, I guess I would just throw a little bit of caution into um, how much people are putting their eggs in a basket with Facebook and stuff like that. You got to be, you got to be careful with this kind of stuff because at the end of the day, Facebook has control over it and not you. So. Okay, that's that's interesting. So, is this something that you've written about for C4SS? What's that? Have you written about polyamory for C4SS yet? Oh, um, no. Uh, a few years ago, actually, I wrote about polyamory and left libertarianism for uh, George Donnelly's uh, event, Agora IO, and I wrote about how I felt like left libertarianism complemented polyamory. I haven't read that essay in a while, so I don't know if I could rehash it, but I mean, I, I remember some of the basic ideas at any rate. But no, I've never written about polyamory, at least for, for C4SS. That might be a good idea, but um, I'm, I'm more of a I'm more of a, uh, you know, I do a lot of the video editing. Every now and again, I'll write, you know, I'll I'll do a, a book review or I'll do, um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll do like I've done some Voltaire declare republishings with introductions and stuff like that. Um, so I'll do special kind of stuff. I'm not usually an op-ed guy, although I don't mind doing op-eds. Uh, I've tried a few times. So, um, so yeah, I haven't written anything about polyamory yet, although that's definitely not another question. And uh, how do you think that, I mean, just kind of briefly, left libertarianism and polyamory complement each other? So um, I think as a general thing, uh, so polyamory being defined as relationships that, um, that have the potential or are involving multiple people in um, sort of committed um, romantic relationships. Um, I think that it's it's very much based on sort of a mutuality, based on a trust, based on everyone being sort of intensely interested in it. Um, I think that when you're when you're when you're interested in libertarianism, you're interested in individuals having that sort of that sort of uh, sort of backdrop of 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 sort of uh, autonomy and trust and like. I think that polyamory in a way sort of mirrors that in that. People are free in a sort of polyamorous relationship. You know that people can set up rules and stuff like that, of course, and you know, sort of. I don't want to say limit the freedom, but you know, certainly have boundaries and all that. Um, about like you know what you can and cannot do, but but otherwise, I mean, it's very. Usually, these boundaries aren't very hard and fast. Usually, they're very adaptive to the people's needs and desires and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't remember exactly what I was arguing for like two years ago or whatever, but I, I do think that if libertarians want a more sort of open, trustful um, society, I think that polyamory is a good sort of relationship sort of uh, framework to, uh, to to encourage. Not, you know, not, not everybody has to do it. Like, I'm not one of those polyamory people who's like, you know, monogamy is unnatural or monogamy is like always insuperior to polyamory. Like, I definitely don't think that. Uh, and you know it's 
pretty much in my self-interest not to have everyone polyamorous because, you know, if everyone's dating everyone, it's like, well, who the hell am I going to get, right? So um, so I'm not really interested in everyone being polyamorous. You know, that's not really my ideal. But I, I do think it should be more well known about. I think it's similar how to, to how I think about um, wage labor versus um, cooperatives. I feel like if people knew about cooperatives a lot more and they had a lot more um, sort of cultural power in society, I felt I feel like more people would choose it over wage labor. So um, it's not a it's, yeah. I, I'm very I, I, opposed to to monogamy as a as a default option. I mean, I mean, yeah. I guess it's fine as a default option, but that people I think a lot of people are monogamous not because they enjoy it or because it's particularly they're well suited to it. It's just because they don't know of anything different. Right. But to piggyback on what you're saying about libertarianism, I don't know about left libertarianism specifically, but I do think it's odd how we've got this ideology that uh, can, canon is taken pretty far as far as overthrowing dominant structures. Um, you know, we uh, anarchists have decided that the state is not a structure that we want to be a part of anymore. Um, certainly the two party, you know, system paradigm, um, we find problematic aspects of capitalism. But, like, the monogamous couple were examined that as well. I just, I find it odd. Joey Clark wrote a really good thing recently about how everyone, you know, is going around saying libertarianism only deals with the use of force in society. Libertarian only, libertarianism only deals with the use of force in society. And he's like, well, then why are we talking about economics? You know, if we can use those ideas right. uh, from libertarianism to examine the economic structure, why we shouldn't use them to examine the social structure, I honestly just don't get it. Um, only from a strategic perspective, from a, you know, big tent, we don't want to alienate people who are, you know, super threatened by the idea of thinking outside the monogamous man-woman family. Sure. But from any kind of logical perspective, it just, it's really sad. Yeah, I gotta agree. Um, I think I think when you interviewed uh, Lauren Rumpler about uh, Objectivist Girl about about polyamory, she brought up a really good point. Why a lot of people view monogamy as the default position, and I mean, you know, I'm not again just like you. I'm not against monogamy itself, although I'm very very skeptical of any sort of relationship system being just taken as default and taken like without a grain of salt, which I feel like many people in society do for monogamy. But she had an excellent point that like. The, the opposite of monogamy isn't like ethical non-monogamy, it's like it's cheating, it's like faithfulness, you know, it's people breaking their contracts, having mistresses, you know, it's 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 soap operas, you know, um, you know, you cheated on me, now I'm going to kill you, that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the alternative to monogamy, it's kind of like with the state and anarchism, it's like the alternative to the state isn't like, you know, us ethically organizing and like, you know, voluntarily, it's like lawlessness and disorder and like everyone throwing palms and like, you know, criminals running amok and it's like, you know, um, so it's like, it's like this boogeyman that people have, you know, about the alternatives, um, you know, uh, Cody Wilson points this out when he's talking about liberals to, um, uh, with Jeffrey Tucker and Stephen Kinsella on an interview they did um, a few months back about intellectual property. And, you know, he's, he's talking about intellectual property with them, and he's saying, you know, liberals just, just need their spooks. They need their, their boogeyman to, uh, you know, to, to feel better about enforcing this sort of monopoly on other people's minds, basically. But, but yeah, that's, that's another topic. But, yeah, I feel like they're – that in, similarly, I feel like a lot of people use sort of um, – you know, the very general ideas about sort of what it means to be a slut and, you know, all that kind of stuff just to, like, snap people out of um, uh, criticizing monogamy. It's like, well, you know, be critical of monogamy maybe, but, you know, what's your alternative? Like, is it is it this? And they'll point to some popular culture movie that, like, doesn't get ethical non-monogamy at all, doesn't even know that's a thing. Um, so, yeah, I think she made a really good point about about that. I think if more people knew... That like no, the only the, not the the only alternative to monogamy is not like you know um, fucking people's emotions over you know right. um, that's not the only option. I and I like your point about the parallel to um, polyamory or ethical non-monogamy being anarchy because yeah exactly what we as libertarians conceive of when we think about anarchy is 
the most most peaceful of exchanges, you right. know, entirely voluntary exchanges, a, a, a more smoothly functioning society without the introduction of violence. And, um, and that's not what most people think of. They think right. of chaos. And so when we think about non-monogamy, we think about more love to go around and more honesty. And most people, when they think non-monogamy, that's not what they think of. So I guess going back to your point earlier about you know, Facebook, there was a, a movie that came out pretty recently, or maybe not has come out, I don't know, and it was supposed to be about anarchy and um, painted a very, very bleak picture of it. And I think while, you know, it is kind of dumb for people to get their ideas about anarchy from blockbuster movies and their ideas about the legitimacy of polyamory from Facebook, like they do, and so these things, like, matter, um, and I guess that's why people are cheering, you know, any kind of positive depiction of anarchy. Jeffrey Tucker has probably done more than anyone else to paint a really beautiful, positive picture of anarchy, um, and, and people are, are wanting this legitimizing that would come with a, with a Facebook option because, you know, that's where the battle is fought, really, you know, in, in people's minds and in popular culture. Uh, to to change the popular perception of these ideas. Yeah. yeah, and and sure, and I mean, I get that. I mean, I it's it's far from me to be able to criticize people for thinking Facebook is a cool place to hang out. Like I hang out on Facebook <laughs> pretty much, pretty much every day, and like I'm on there quite a bit. Um, it's far you know far be it from me to criticize people for thinking you know Facebook's got some legitimacy here and there. I definitely recognize that that's where the conversa a lot of conversations happen. Um, I guess, again, I just want to s sort of emphasize um, caution about developing social movements. Or, or So so consider um, Thaddeus Russell had a great uh, article about um, sort of how, how, why a lot of the revolutions uh, that were happening all over the world, um, you know, in, in Egypt and, and all these other places, um, you know, weren't just based on um, the social media networks, which of course, you know, lots of people are saying it's like, oh, it's all because of Twitter and it's all because of this, but it was also because of popular culture and it was also because of sort of the developing conversation that was going on now. Um, so I guess I just want to caution putting our eggs too much in one basket, especially when we don't have as much control over that basket as like somebody else does. Like I don't have anywhere near the control over Facebook as other as you know the CEOs and stockbrokers and whatever do. Um, so yeah, no, I, I definitely think it's a good thing that, I mean, like, you know, all, all I can say right now is I'm in an open relationship with, with one person, and that's not really, that's not really as fulfilling as saying, like, I'm in a polyamorous relationship with, you know, X, and, like, you know, X can say, well, I'm in a polyamorous relationship with, with Y, but I'm also in, like, a friend man's with, like, Z and A or whatever. Um, so yeah, so I definitely get that, you know, these are th places that exist and that's going to happen. Um, you know, part of me wishes that wasn't the case, but you know, obviously there's nothing really we can do about it. We just got to make the best of it. Um, so yeah, um, I, I, I definitely I definitely get that point uh, as much as I sort of like bear and grin that, you know, Facebook is, is sort of a legitimizer. As, as far as the anarchy thing goes, actually, um, yeah, I think Trevor Holdner from C4SS wrote a write-up or a very short write-up about uh, it's called like Purge Anarchy or Anarchy the Purge or whatever. I just saw like a, another trailer for it like the other day and it looked really stupid. Uh, and I, I like I think I immediately put the the video on on mute. But um, but yeah, so I don't know too much about it. I just know like basically it's like the the, the plot is that like one day like all laws are stopped, which is totally anarchy. And, um, you know, everybody goes crazy and starts killing each other and, you know, it's for the greater good because I don't, the trailer doesn't make it clear why it happens. I guess it's overpopulation or I don't know. So maybe, maybe Malthus is like grinning from his grave or something. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so I don't really know too much about the movie. I know Trevor Holdner has written about it on C4SS, so maybe I'd recommend people check that out. But it looks like, it looks like a really lame movie. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I feel really mixed about our ideas coming from popular culture and like social movements being interested in being legitimized, um, you know, that always kind of not always kind of bugs me, but recently it's it's bugged me. I mean, you see this with sort of the the LGBTQ movement 
um, you know, uh, looking for legitimization from you know popular culture, the state. They're looking to get married. They're looking to do this and that. And you know, I mean, it's complicated. I'm not saying it's good or bad one way or the other. You know, um, but I do think that there are some cons that come with trying to be legitimized by the popular media and by the state. You know, um, I do think there's a bit of an aspect that is admirable or even even desirable for being on the wrong side of the law or being on the wrong side of society um, that I think uh, makes it possible for more independent thought and, rebe and social rebellion, um, even if it also has its negative consequences too, of course. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I wish that there was a little bit more nuance with people in desiring things like gay marriage. You know, I mean, I think... I think the whole institution of marriage really should just go away. And I don't really just mean like the state practice. I mean the general practice of marriage. I think really should go away. But um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not like in a rally against gay people getting married if that's what makes them happy. I just, I just think it's, it's a prioritization that I just can't grasp with because I just think it's a. I hate to keep bringing up like one thinker, like just to, as if I'm only dependent on this thinker. But but Thaddeus Russell had another great article on. Uh, sort of the history of the, the brief history of the sort of gay, uh, the LGBTQ movement and sort of where they were coming from originally with gay liberation and they weren't very interested in marriage or feeling legitimate and all that stuff. I feel like that's way better than, uh, than what's going on now. I mean, you know, a lot of these marches have like corporate sponsors and like they want to get state marriage and like, you know, I mean, I understand it to a certain extent, you know, but at the other, it's like, at, at what point do you just, you know, say that the whole movement has been kind of liberalized to to a certain extent, and you know, and not in a not in a classical, I guess, good sense, but you know, um, in sort of the sort of the Obama sense or whatever. So I don't know. Those those are just some of my concerns, I guess, with that. I mean, I I definitely see a lot of benefits to overthrowing the institution of marriage, but at the same time, I feel like it's kind of um, selfish of us to say as, as you know straight people um, or people who are not very heavily involved in the LGBT you know equality movement oh you know instead of just trying to achieve the privileged status we enjoy um, you should be working hard to overthrow social institutions like yeah like that would be better I, I kind of agree but at the same time like people are self-interested and also that there's no reason that, to me, you know, you're still going to have that weird subset. You know, maybe most gay people just want to get married and, like, have a two-car garage and, um, and everything like that. But you'll, you'll always have gay and straight people who are like, uh, I, I don't think that these social institutions are really um, cutting it, and I think we should challenge them. So I don't know. I hesitate to to criticize the LGBT movement, especially because usually the criticism I hear is from whatever, you know, normal libertarians saying, oh, you know, we shouldn't fight for gay marriage, we should fight to end state involvement in marriage, and I'm like, well, and then somebody else on my, sh Robert Kruger on my show said, oh, we should criticize them because they are not fighting for poly marriage as well. Oh, and it's like, they're freaking self-interested individuals. Like, they're not responsible for reforming our entire society. Um, sure. They can just get theirs, and that's that's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, so um, there's this great essay by um, by Charles Johnson called The Cake is Rotten, which is just a criticism of marriage as an institution. Uh, which I which I which I recommend. It's a it's a it's a pretty interesting one. Um, and you know, I think, and he points out too, you know, um, that the, there's a lot of sort of heterosexism, or, or rather, sort of hetero privilege that comes in society. And I mean, personally, I'm pansexual, so I mean, you know, I'm, it's not like I'm not I'm not queer or whatever. But um, you're right that you're right on the second point that I'm definitely not involved with LGBTQ stuff. So you know, that point definitely applies to me at any rate. Um, you know, I think that you're definitely right that these are important to these things and it's a bit selfish for me because I have my own personal stuff. I have my own experiences with... Hello, you going? Oh, I need a plug-in. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay, cool. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so I mean, there's um, there's definitely benefits that we get, or, or, or not we, but you know, people get from marriages and I mean, I... 
part of me feels like, you know, instead of just trying to get everyone equally involved with privilege, we should just abolish the privilege, but I also recognize that, like, that's, you know, more of a long-term thing than a short-term thing, and in the short term, like, you know, people need to see their partners in hospitals, and, you know, they need to be able to live together and you know, not be harassed by the state. But at the other end, it's like, if you equalize, equalize the privileges, you're, you're, um, you're getting the state more involved in your life, or, or at least you're ha giving them more control of your life by having, at least in a way, I mean, I don't know how directly it works out. It probably depends on, you know, the given geographic area and who you are and whatever, how friendly the police are feeling, to be sure. Um, you know, um, whether you're opening yourself up to more state control or not, I guess, is up for debate. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I hear you, you know. I'm, not, I'm, I'm certainly not going to, like, protest against gay marriage. I'm not really interested in that either. But, I, again, I do want to stress kind of nuance or sort of... Um, not that I'm the most nuanced person in the world, but just that I think there's a lack of Listen, nuance. nuance has no place in a libertarian conversation. <laughs> we all know that. Exactly. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a controversial person at all, so nobody knows who I am, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, uh, but I, I think that there is a lack of nuance when sometimes when people, like, like um, you know, sometimes people will talk about, like, equality under the law, and, I, and as an anarchist, that makes me, you know, kind of cringe, because I'm just like, well, no, I don't want to be equal under the law. I want to be equal with the law. Like, I want to I want to have the Jeffersonian ideal of being equal with the law. You know, all people are, are lawmakers in a, in a respect, you know, what, whether you believe in laws or not. Um, so I don't know. There's this. There's definitely this conflict between what we ideally want to happen and what's practical. And I mean, you know, I'm a bit of a dreamer, I guess. So I'm more interested in theoretical, idealistic stuff than what some people consider practical or legitimate. Um, you know, I mean, people have found the institution of marriage very practical for a very long time. But honestly, its failure rate doesn't make me think it's that practical. I mean, that's not. A, you know, a decisive argument against it or whatever. I'm not saying that it is, but, you know, just the the history of marriage and the way that it typically works out, or, or a lot of the time it works out for people. Um, and I don't know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't always strike me as the practical option to, um, to just go along with whatever society wants. I think, I think there's definitely value in having these subgroups that are you know, basically a criminal class that are just like, you know, I'm not interested in your laws, I'm not interested in your society or being legitimate or being whatever. Um, I think there's there's a real benefit to having people like that. I'm not saying everybody needs to be like that. You know, obviously people are, like you said, self-interested. And this is all obviously self-interested for me too, although I just don't think that's a bad thing. You know, sure, it's selfish, but, you know, whatever. Um, I, I I do care, you know, what what about what makes people happy. You know, if getting married and having two kids and, you know, having the white fence makes you happy, you know, I'm not going to, like, bar down your doors and, like, you know, start having an orgy in your house and, like, try to convince you that, you know, polyamory is the way or whatever. Uh, I'm just not interested in that. But I, I am interested in criticism and I am interested in dialogue and I do think that at least moving certain away from trying to always be legitimate, you know, um, I think is more positive than, you know, it, it's it's just I don't know I I'm just uncomfortable with the way that sometimes the LGBTQ movement goes. And again, I'm not the most active person in these movements, so I can only say so much. But you know, I'm I'm partially not active, you know, because of the way that I see things going sometimes. Um, and it just seems like you know the Stonewall riots are just like a distant, vague memory that like didn't really mean much, and like people were just like bashing back against cops because, like, you know, they weren't being allowed to, like, marry or something, which totally wasn't what was going on. So, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I realize a lot of this stuff is long-term, so I'm, I'm not going to, like, you know, push people down and tell them they can't get married if that's what they want. Um, but I am skeptical of this desire. So we're about out of time. Um, do you have places where people can find your work? Sure. Um, so I write for an uh, I, I write for a site called AbolishWork.com. I, I actually uh, pretty much own the site, and I write blogs there every now and again. Sometimes I'll repost content. 
Um, you can also find me on c4ss.org. I have some republished Volterine stuff. Um, I've done audio recordings. Um, I do C4SS media uh, or C4, C4SS videos on the YouTube channel uh, for C4SS. I edit the videos, and sometimes I do the voices, too. You can also find me on Facebook. I don't use G+, very much. Um, so, uh, and I think that's about it. No, not, oh, you can also find me on Twitter, uh, like at Nick Fenord. Uh, like the Robert Anton Wilson thing. Um, so, yeah, so that that's the main places to find me. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for coming on, Nick, and thank you thank guys you. so much for watching. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Please like, comment, share, subscribe.